Bibles to the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6. Ephesians, chapter 6 is where we'll be tonight. Uh, we'll jump around to um, a couple places. I'll, actually, I'll give you that first one right now. Uh, hold your Bible. Uh, turn to Ephesians, chapter 6. Um, that's, where we'll, well, that's where we'll begin. Uh, but hold your Bible at Deuteron Deuteronomy, uh, chapter number 6. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. I'll give you a moment to, to get there. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. We're going to bounce around a little bit, not too much, uh, but a little bit. Um, we're continuing our study um, at, on stewardship, you know, a uh, series titled A Faithful Steward uh, Because We Have Been Given uh, So Much. And, and God has uh, blessed our lives greatly, okay? Um, we may all have different things, but we are all blessed of God, and, and we should count ourselves blessed um, because God has been so good to us, giving us salvation, uh, giving us forgiveness of sins, and everything else that we have in our lives is a gift from God. You know, I think of when Job said in, in, in Job chapter, chapter number one, he said, naked, came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, in this life, think about it this way. In this life, we come in having nothing. I mean, He gave us life. That, that's a gift in and of itself. And we have nothing. Everything that we have up to this point is a gift from God. And, and as a reminder, everything that He has given us, we want to do well with the things that we have given us, right? So part of this study is the fact that we are all stewards. Everything belongs to the Lord, and we are all stewards, managers. We, are all, we want to take care of what God has given us. So the, the purpose of this study is that we analyze again, once again, that we analyze all the things that God has given us, things that we have, and are we doing right with what God has given us? Are we living our life according to the Scriptures? And so this uh, evening, we're going to talk about a very important stewardship. Um, a very, um, I would say, uh, in the world today, is it is a stewardship that has been stewarded very poorly, not according to how the how the how uh, the, the, not ac not according to the scriptures. It is it is a stewardship that um, holds a lot of weight, has a lot of impact, and that God, if God has given you this stewardship, do not take it your responsibility lightly. So. Uh, two weeks ago, we talked about uh, the stewardship of a wife and, and, and a godly woman and the importance um, and the role of a godly woman. And last week, we talked about the importance of, of a godly man and, and the godly leader and leading the home and, uh, and how those two things work out. And so this week, we're going to talk about an incredibly important stewardship, and that is that of children. And that is that of children. God has a lot to say about the way that parents ought to raise their children. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. We're going to start out in verse number 4. Actually, let's, let's begin in the beginning of the chapter. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may, that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. And so right away in Ephesians chapter 6, there is a commandment given to children to obey their parents, to honor their parents, to honor their father and mother. That, that, is, that is a good thing. That is honorable to the Lord. In, chapter, in verse number 4, uh, he talks to fathers, um, and we'll see it, it, it applies as well, all parents, uh, but specifically fathers here. Um, verse 4, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. This is where we'll start, um, and we'll go to other places. Um, but, uh, again, the title of this evening's service is simply Stewardship, the Stewardship of ch Children. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Lord, we come before you once again this evening. Lord, I, we need your help. Um, Lord, as we look at this study, um, Lord, I, I pray that, we see the Bible as our authority. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that you help me to 
teach, not my opinion, Lord, not my uh, personal preference, but Lord, that you help me to teach and you help us to see what you have already commanded, what you have already said in your word. Father, I, I pray that you speak to our lives in a very special way, um, Father, and whether we be parents, not parents, Lord, that we see the importance of these scriptures and that we see the importance of investing in the next generation. Father, we, and we, lo we love you. We desire to do right by you each and every single day, Father. I pray that who we are be a reflection as to uh, who we are in Christ, Lord, be a reflection as to how we interact with people, especially uh, in raising children, Father. Father, we need your help. We'll meet with us, um, give us wisdom, and guide us and direct us, Father. We, we desire to give you all the praise and all the glory. Father, we pray these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And so, again, look, again, look at uh, verse number 4. It says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so we're going to look at, we're going to go through different parts of Scripture as to what the Bible talks about in raising children. And understand this, is that raising children should be according to the Scriptures. You know, the, the thing I love about the Bible is that it is inclusive into every single area that we need in our lives. And so it, 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 everything, that we, the, the direction that we need in our lives is no different when it comes to children and is no different um, when it comes to, actually, let me, let me back up a little bit. Um, what we ought to do and the way that we ought to approach things is always according to the Scriptures. That never changes. That never changes. And, and we see here is that, uh, we'll talk about here in just a minute, but the importance of teaching children, directing, instruction, and the importance of discipline. Uh, the Bible is clear, the nurture and admonition of the Lord it is that children need direction, children need guidance, and God has, if you're a parent today, or maybe you're a grandparent, or maybe former, or, or, or um, a parent, grandparent, maybe future parent, whatever the case may be, God has a lot to say about raising children, and God has given you those children for the purpose of giving them back one day for the purpose of raising them to love God. And so, uh, understand, when we think about raising children according to the Scriptures, um, if you think about whether it's your household, or whether it's um, maybe you're a grandparent, and you're kind of just helping mom and dad wherever they can, or, or whatever, the came, whatever the case may be, you're soon to be grandparent, or soon to be, or maybe in the future, and soon to be parent, all right? I, I fit in that category. Um, the Lord would have me to have kids, um, then, that, then I fit in that category. But the question that I have, as we, that I want us to have in the back of our mind as we consider this passage, was if Jesus Christ was the head of your home, would things in your household look different? And let me say this, is that Jesus Christ should be the head of your home. And if the answer to that is yes, then there's a problem. Because parents... Uh, especially, you know, we talk about the, the role of the husband, is that the husband should be an example of Jesus Christ and should lead the home according to what God says and according to how, how Christ would have you lead the home. And, and so, uh, ask yourself that question as we look through these scriptures. And understand this, I said it before, is that God have maybe have given you children, um, but they are God's children. You know, Psalm 127.3 says, Lo, children are an heritage to the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is His reward. When it comes to stewardship, children is no different. They are God's child. And God has given to you for a set period of time to grow them, to raise them, to teach them what it is that He would have you to teach them. And then one day they are called, um, ideally, to do the same. Right? So we want to do good with the time that we have. And so, if we think about parent, parenting, and we, and we think about uh, the role of a parent, uh, what is the goal of parenting, right? If we just think about a big picture here, the goal of parenting, I've heard it put this way, um, if we think about um, when, it, when the scripture says, uh, let me just read it here, Genesis 2.24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, right, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, right? So, if we're thinking about parenting and we're thinking about big picture, 
we know that at some point, uh, children grow up, okay? And at some point, uh, children are no longer children, all right? And, and they grow up, and your job is to prepare them for that, I, absolutely. And so I've heard it put this way, is the goal of a parent is to work yourself out of a job. It's to work yourself out of a job, to get that child to a point when they no longer need you. It, it, when you think about when you think about any job, you think um, um, you think you know I need to do this and this and this and this. When we think about parenting. If you think about it, a job, you know it's a little bit different than a regular job. But the goal is you're working for your retirement essentially. You're working so that they no longer need you. Um, and there will come a point. I know. Um, I know that's not easy a, a lot of times to hear, and you know it's a hard thing to let go of, but that is a parent's job, to work yourself um, out of a job um, that once, you know, they leave the nest of the home, you'd be, wi- you'd be able to, with a good conscience before God, say, God, I did everything that I could according to what you said to do. God, they are in your hands. God, you are their shepherd. You are their God. You are their heavenly Father. God, I did everything that I can. I, 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 I can stand with a good conscience before God. That is the goal of a parent. You know, I, I think when we think of parents and we think of children, clearly the hard part <laughs> is that children also have a will of their own, right? They also have a mind of their own, right? Um, and though we cannot force them to do a, certain things, or we cannot force them, you know, once they leave the home to follow God, but hey, that, that, is, that is the goal of the steward is saying with any stewardship is, God, I did the best that I could with what you gave me. Lord, I tried to follow you. And, you know, and sometimes I will say that is hard, right? That is hard to let go <laughs> and when a child leaves the home, you know, because parents, a lot of times, they still have a need, a necessity to be needed. Right, they want to be needed. They've been needed for all their life, or I should say, for the what, what, whatever those 18 years. But the goal is that they to get children to a point where they no longer need you the same way. You'll always be their parent, right? You, if you're a parent, you'll always be mom. You'll always be dad, whatever the case may be. But that goal is to do just that. And so, again, so to to get them to a point where they no longer need you. And let me be specific. That is just that is not only uh, that is not only uh, you know to brush your teeth, to you know go to bed at a good time, not only to you know make sure that they're doing okay in school. That applies. Don't get me wrong. Okay, <laughs> that applies. At the very least, potty train them. All right. At the very least, when they get 18, they should be potty trained. Um, <laughs> All right, that's a bare minimum uh, a badge right there. Um, but really, in addition to all the necessary, customary things to teach a child, when it comes to a, a, a Christian parent, and that is what you're called to be, a Christian parent, you must teach them to live for God. Why? why? So, so, so when that child departs, they will be ready and equipped to serve God on their own. Right at that point, you help them make decisions. That help at that point, you have led them in the best way that you can. But the real truth, the the, re, the real test is, you know, when they leave the home, are they still going to be faithful to God? You know, and of course, you know, of course, children have to make their own decision of salvation, and children have to make their own decision to follow God. But again, it's not. It, it's 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 a test of God. Did I do everything that I can. And so what do we see about um, the role of parents? Well, we see that, first of all, parents must be teachers. And by, one that I mean by that is, is teachers and, you know, obviously you're a parent. You teach, if you're a parent, you're a teacher, right? That they, it, it kind of goes with, uh, with that role. Uh, but if you look at, at, at the scripture here in verse number four, it says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, all right, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of of the Lord, all right, that word nurture is a, is a Greek word, uh, paideia, all right, am I saying that right, I have no idea, but it's, it's, that's the Greek word, um, and it's translated to many different things, but it, it's the idea of, of 
of instruction, chastening, chastisement. It is, it is the idea of teaching children what it is that they need to know about God and His Word. It is what it needs to know about God and His Word. So, the, the, so nurture, to teach, uh, to admonish, to instru instruct, chastise. Turn your Bibles now to Deuteronomy chapter number 4. I'm sorry. Six. I'm sorry. I, I told you six. I meant four. Deuteronomy chapter number four. You know, I take that back again. It was six. All right. I had you right the first time. All right. Deuteronomy uh, chapter six. I went to the wrong page and, and, and thought it was the, the incorrect one. Uh, but let, let's read here. And, and specifically, we're going to look at the word, talk about that concept of instruction and, and nurturing. Look at verse number one. And so just give you context. You know, these are the commandments Moses has given to the children of Israel before they are to inherit the land things that they ought to know, things that they ought to live by. So look at verse number 1. It says, Now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to possess it. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God and keep all his statutes and his commandments which I command thee, thou and thy son and thy son's sons, right? Keep that in mind, that you keep them, and not only you, but thy son and thy son's sons, right, that from generation to generation, these teachings ought to go on. And it says, all the days of thy life, that, that, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, that ye may increase mightily, as, Lord, uh, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee, in the land that floweth with milk and honey. Hear, hear O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Here it is, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with thy soul and with thy mind. All these words which I commanded thee this day shall be in thine heart. And, and here, here, here it is again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and, and, and shalt talk of them that thou sittest in thine house. And when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down and when thou risest up, Thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and, and on, on thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord God shall have brought thee into the land which he sware unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities which thou buildest not. And so, here, here's, here's again the commandment reiterated that parents teach their children, right? Uh, it's very simple. Verse, six, verse 7, let's look at it again. And thou shalt teach, um, actually, let's, let's look back in verse number 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So there's this idea, and it's, it's, uh, it's incredibly important, right? I, I think we understand that parents ought to teach their children. But here's the key. The Word of God has to reach your heart first. The Word of God has to reach your heart first. Because here's, here's the reality. Nobody likes a hypocrite. Hypocritical Christian living will drive a child away from the Lord, not to it. When a parent just says, do this, do this, do this, and doesn't live by it, they are setting a horrible example of Jesus Christ, a horrible example of our Lord. And so understand this is that the word of God has to has to permeate, has to penetrate your heart, your heart, make a difference in your life, and you ought to live by it. Children are very good at seeing if you truly believe the things that you say. They they are very good at seeing if you actually do the things that you call them to do. And so and, and this is very this is very critical, right? Because uh children will learn more by what you do than by what you say. The example that you set before them is what they will more likely, uh, is what they will be uh, model after. Why? Because the true test of if you believe something is if you live by it, right? And so if, you, if, if, a, if a parent teaches a child something and they don't live by it and they're not an example and they're not living according to God and the scriptures, 
the world are going to see that you don't really believe that, or if maybe you, you do, it's not really that important. Why? Because mom and dad doesn't do it, so why should I do it, right? And so it, it's super, super, super important uh, that, <laughs> that you are the example, right? Um, it, th- that is how cr- Jesus Christ, um, th- that is how he, s- he set the example for his disciples, right? Uh, the, the, the amazing thing about Jesus Christ is that he was a servant's leader. He was a loving leader. He was the example that the disciples ought to follow after. Because here's the reality is, is, when, is when children uh, think, hey, I don't know what to do in this situation. I don't know X, Y, and Z. They think, well, what did, how did mom and dad handle this? How did they handle this? Well, they, and they will be more likely to model them, right? You, that's why oftentimes you see whether good or bad, you know, oftentimes you see when, when a lot of times when parents uh, grow up with a, a, I'm sorry, not parents, when, when children grow up with a parent that, you know, whether they're not a good parent, whether they're abusive, whatever the case may be, though a lot of times even if, you know, this is an extreme situation, if a, if a child is not brought up well and they might not even like the way that they're brought up, how oftentimes do we see them become their parent? The same thing, the same thing that they didn't like, right? We see that same cycle repeated generation after generation after generation. Why? Because you have a tendency to lean towards what you have seen. You have a tendency to lean towards the example that has set before you. And, and so and so the word of God has to reach your heart. And let me tell you, when the word of God reaches your heart, when, when you set the example when, when you not only walk it, but you, you know, when you not only talk it, but you walk it. Listen, that'll do much more than just simply teaching. That'll do so much more. Wow, they actually believe this. They're actually walking by it. Wow, they really love God that much. You know, <laughs> a good relationship with the Lord is infectious. When somebody has a love for the Word, when somebody has a love for God, when they're willing to make sacrifices for the Lord, when they're willing to take a stand, Children see that. Other people in your life see that. And, and, and when, you, when you have that light of Christ, when you let that light shine, it makes a difference. So I just, it's just super important that the Word of God reaches you first, that you set the example, that you may lead the home the way that God would have you to. So you, the, the, the Word of God had to, to reach you and flow through you, right? Something that I, is super important when preaching um, something that, you know, you've learned is that the word has to come not only from me, from, from the word to you guys, it should come through me. I, when I listen to preaching, you can tell if somebody's preaching with conviction. You can tell if they really believe. You can tell if it's had a difference in their lives. Not just because they're shouting, not just because they're getting all loud, right? That, that, that's not necessarily conviction. Conviction is you see it, the difference that it has made in their lives. Something that I always have to make sure that I do is not only that I see what the Bible says and teach it or see it and preach it, but know that I let the Word of God work through me and that it see the, see the difference that it makes in my life and that it will show up in the preaching. Children should see the difference, the Word of God, that Christ has made in your life, and that will make the much more the difference. Because how, how, how much, uh, I, one of the things that, you know, is pet peeve of mine is when I listen to preaching or something, and it's a monotone voice, and you think, hey, do they really believe what they're saying? And because it makes a difference. And so, and so the, God, the word of God should flow through you. They, they, they should see that in you. And, of course, the commandment is to teach them, verse 7, and thou shalt teach them diligently. Diligently. <laughs> it is your job. Don't give up on teaching. Hey, they're not learning. They're not learning. Don't give up. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And shalt talk, uh, talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. There's this idea of being diligent, not, not giving up. And say, hey, just because they haven't gotten this doesn't, doesn't mean that they're not going to get it. Hey, be diligent. And, and so teaching is so important. Why? Because the world is not going to teach your children how to live for God. And though church, yes, we have systems set up, though, though we have Sunday school, though we have master clubs, though we have all these things, um, though we have all these things, teaching first begins in the home. And those things that you learn in, that, that, that you are taught at home are validated or are, 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 are put the exclamation mark. We support 
what you're teaching, if it's in the Bible, they're going to hear it again in the church. And, 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 and again, do they need to hear it twice? Absolutely. We need to hear it twice. We need to hear it more than twice. Uh, and, and so the commandment is to teach them. And, and so how, how, do we, how do you teach them? Well, I think family devotionals, devotional with the family, having Bible time with the family at the home is important. It's important. Parents are going to, kids are going to notice if you read your Bible. Parents are going to notice if you're, or I'm sorry, children are going to notice if you're in prayer, right? They, they notice these things. My, my, my parent believes this, but do they walk the walk? Do they really live by it? And so family devotions, I believe, are a great idea, right? And, and so, and so I, I believe it's great to have a set time that as a family you come together and you read the Word and you have a devotional, whatever the case may be, and it kind of helps grow and unify the family. And, and more than that, um, as, the, as they continue living their lives, as you go day by day, you also teach them then, right? Um, and so, you know, let me just read, read the verse again. Um, Thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and, and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. I, I think about, you should always... A teacher's job is, is, especially, I mean, a parent, their job is never, you can't just turn the parent thing off, right? Um, when, whenever you have an opportunity to teach them the scriptures, when you teach them God's word, to teach them what God says, that is an opportunity. You know, I, I think about the example of Jesus, uh, when every time there was an opportunity that we see in the scriptures to teach the disciples a valuable lesson, Jesus was there, right? Uh, we just looked at a couple of weeks ago. Um, when when the disciples, uh, you know, did not allow somebody to, to, to cast, I believe it was, cast out demons, right, cast out demons in Jesus' name, and then Jesus took that opportunity to teach them an example, right? Well, when, when there's something going on in a child's life, when they're not, when they're having a rough time, when they are, uh, maybe well, maybe when they're sad, when they're happy, right? When when something, when when they when they achieve something, you know, make sure you 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 point them to God, give God the glory. Hey hey, I know this is going on in your life, but hey, point them back to what what Jesus said. Point them back to God's word. That may they, they may learn how God's word is very real and applies in their life, right? It's not just, you know, it's not some, <laughs> it's not some math formula that you'll never use again in your life, right? Uh, what, what is it? Um, if you're, unless you're a mathematician. Uh, I'm trying to think of one. See, I can't even remember. Um, a squared plus B squared equals C squared. I've never used that in my life. A after, <laughs> maybe Mark has, maybe some of you have, but I have never used the Pythagorean theorem. I have never used um, quadratic formula x equals negative b plus or minus square root of e squared minus 4ac, something like that, something like that. I've never used that once. You, you can fact check me, that's probably wrong. Somewhere along those lines, all right? Um, I have never used that, but rest assured, they will use the commandments of God. Why? Because God gave, us to, God gave them to us for a reason. I can't tell you the amount of times where I've been having a hard time, but because I've committed scripture to memory and I've kept the word of God and I've learned it, it's helped me out tremendously. So you teach them. Just You teach children how to brush your teeth. You teach children how to behave. You teach children how to do X, Y, and Z. Teach them what the Bible says. It is so important. And then when life comes up, in the good and the bad, look for teaching opportunities. Now, that's the idea um, I believe we see here. As you get an opportunity, not only during a set time, but you always are teaching the scriptures. Now look at it. Let's keep going. Verse number 8. Let me say this. It should be clear what you stand for, what you believe. Verse number 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy head, upon thine hand. And thou shalt be as frontlets, right? This kind of like this kind of thing that you wear on your head. Uh, be as frontlets uh, between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon, upon the posts of thy house and upon thy gates, right? And so, so we see two things there, right? And thou shalt bind them upon a sign upon thine hand, and thou shalt be as frontlets uh, between thine eyes. I don't, I don't believe it's literally telling us to put 
take a take a sharpie and you know kind of write a Bible verse on our forehead. Um, I, I believe it's I believe it's to children to know what you stand for. They should know your opinion on things because it, it's God's opinion on things. They, they should know what you're about. They should know um, that wherever advice you're going to give them is going to be biblical advice. Right? And in addition to that, I believe it should be clear what the family stands for. Right? What the family stands for. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. You should know, hey, we're a Christian family. Yeah, I don't know what everybody else is doing. Right? I kind of have, as Joshua said, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And so there's this idea of, hey, they should see it in you, what you stand for. And there's this idea that everybody else should see them too. And that it is your identity. It is your identity. And, you know, it, they should see what you stand for. And also, you know, when you have, let's say, Bible verses in your home, when you have, you know, there, when there's evidence of Jesus Christ, when there's reminders, you know, for example, you know, those WWJD um, bracelets, I believe, are an awesome thing, you know, amazing reminders. Um, one thing that is, uh, that we see that God teaches us is the importance of reminding people, right? He, he, how the importance of, you know, I, I believe the Apostle Paul said, hey, don't forget to put these things in the remembrance of them, right? Talking, I believe it's talking to Timothy. Um, and, and how God, we talked about how God's system is set up so that we remember things, right? Children like pictures. <laughs> children like signs. You know, short little words, right? It, we know that children... So whatever it is, whatever tool we can to help children remember, right? It, it, it is a great idea. Uh, one, w one question you ask, okay, what am I going to teach my children? Another question, good question is, okay, how will they remember? Am I just going to repeat it? Am I going to give them some sort of uh, little phrase or, um, or rhyme or whatever? You know, what would Jesus do, right? That, that's WWJD, right? Whatever the case may be, what, what, what are you going to teach them? And how are they going to remember? Why? Because we easily forget, okay? <laughs> we need to be reminded, so, so do children. And so we, we see this teaching aspect, okay? And also there's this other aspect of parenting, right? Um, that we see here is discipline. Discipline, discipline, discipline. Turn to Hebrews chapter number 12. That's where we'll be next, Hebrews chapter number 12. Right, so if we think about that word that well, in the Ephesians six, in Ephesians six, the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Uh, it's the Greek word nustasia, right? It, it's this idea of calling attention to, uh, a mild rebuke or warning, an admonition, right? It, it's kind of a warning or, or, or rebuke, right? Um, and here in Hebrews uh, chapter twelve, we see again the idea of rebuke. Let me read that. In verse 5, and it says, And ye have forgotten, right, the, the author of Hebrews writing uh, to Hebrews, right, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh uh, to you as unto children. And it says, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. So, again, God chastens, God corrects, God dis disciplines his children. Not, not out of... Um, not because he doesn't like us, because he loves us. Quite the opposite. It says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he, is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if, if ye be without chasten, uh, chastisement, whereof all are partakers. Then are ye bastards and not sons, a bastard is an illegitimate son. Um, furthermore, 
we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they barely, uh, for they barely, for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but He for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness. Now no chastening for those present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peace, the peaceable fruit of the righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. And, and so, and so we'll, we'll talk about that here in, in just a moment. But parents must be ready and be equipped to teach their children. And children, when we think when we think about uh, the, the whole picture, right? Getting children ready to live for God. And, and make sure that, that we do well with what God has commanded parents to do. Children need to learn. They learn by teaching. In another word, they, another way they learn, sometimes, especially when the teaching is not getting through the ears, sometimes when disobedience comes into play, discipline is a biblical thing. Parents also must be ready to teach, and they also must be ready to discipline. And so we saw it in Ephesians 6, children need to obey their parents, right? It is biblical. Children obey their parents. And, and so when we think about uh, when, when the children become of age, they need to learn to obey God. And understand this, that obedience is not a choice. Obedience is never a choice. God says, go share the gospel. That is a command. You do not do it, you're disobeying, right? If, if a parent gives a child a commandment and a rule, that is not a choice. You say, hey, go clean your room. That means go clean your room, right? It does not mean just do what you want or however you want to do it. It is a command. If you don't do it, it is disobedience, okay? So children must learn to obey. And if children are disobedient to their parents, and they can't even respect their earthly authority, how do we think that they're going to respect their heavenly authority, their heavenly father? And so children learning to obey is 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 an important part of learning to be obedient to God. And so a children a child a, a disciplined child who knows how to obey is more is is more prepared to walk with God than one who is not. Why? Because obedient is very simple. Do what I say. Right? And so And so for obedience to work, they must know why it's necessary, right? I, I think sometimes if parents are not careful, they can just say, do what I say and forget the teaching aspect, right? Or sometimes people, parents go the other way where they just say, uh, hey, teach them and teach them kind of this, this gentle parenting approach and just teaching them. And if they get it, they get it. No, no, no. Both have, both are a part of parenting, <laughs> teaching and discipline. Sometimes the only way children learn is when you discipline them, right? I, I'm guilty, right? Sometimes the only way I learned was when consequences came into play, right? Oh, I understand why because, and, and, and let me back up a little bit. Here, here's the reality. The reason why it's important for children to obey, and really the purpose of obedience is teaching them the right way to live. And when you do not live the right way, there is a consequence, right? There, there is a consequence. You know, for example, you know, uh, uh, in Bible college, you know, they, I, I think, I think of uh, different Bible colleges. A lot of them teach you the importance of different things, kind of like, you know, making sure you're well groomed, right? Keeping your room clean and things like that. And these things can seem like they're not so important, but they are important. They definitely are important. Why? Because what happens if your room is a pigsty, right? What happens if you have trash and clothes and stuff everywhere? That will have an effect on the rest of your life, right? The way that you treat the things that God has given you, right? And I'm thinking of a pile of clothes that I need to put in the laundry right now. That's, that's what I'm thinking when I say this. Um, but the way that you take care, it, it shows that you value what God has given you. And, and what happens that you have clothes scattered over the place and it takes you 20 minutes to get ready for 
for school or get ready for work because you can't find anything. Everything's dirty, right? And, and then that affects the rest of your life, and then you become lazy in other things, right? What's my point? There is a purpose why these rules are in place. And if you don't learn to adhere by the rules, uh, then there will be a consequence, right? And something that a lot of people don't realize when you become older is part of the blessing of having, is being under subjection of your parents. And here's what I mean by that. Why? Because when you're older, you need to learn to parent yourself. You need to learn to parent yourself. And nobody's going to hold your hand if you don't clean your room. Nobody's going to hold your hand if you don't wash the dishes. Well, your spouse might have something to say about it if you don't do your job. But the point is, is that you have, you have to be disciplined in yourself, right? That'll harm you in your life if that discipline, if you didn't get that when you were younger, okay? There are things that when I was younger, I did not learn to do, and I had to pay the consequence, and they were that much more harder to overcome once I became an adult, okay? <laughs> we got college kids see this all the time, all right? Um, I think, I believe, yeah, my room, I, I had, I had um, some roommates in college, right? I felt, let, let, me, let me just remind you this. Uh, when I first became an adult, when I went away for college, I was not the same person I am today, right? I've grown a lot, become more responsible, um, had to learn a lot of things the hard way, all right? Um, and I was not necessarily a responsible person <laughs> by any means. I had to learn a lot. I've, I've grown a lot. My mom, will, she's testimony of that. She has, a different, she has a different son than she had just five years ago. Um, but I was not necessarily a responsible one. But compared to a lot of college kids, I was very responsible. And that's saying something. I remember I had a roommate who, we, we both went grocery shopping, all right? College kids going grocery shopping, college boys going grocery shopping, need some help, okay? Um, I learned after a little bit how to go grocery shopping, you know, buy meats, buy not, not a lot of vegetables, some vegetables, some spices, right, to learn to cook and all that. But I had a roommate, you would look in his shopping cart, you would see snack, you would see all these junk food, and I'm like, where's the stuff that you're cooking? You would see all these frozen foods. And, and I, I, I remember pretty vividly his dinner, I, I, I swear for dinner one day, he had fries and ketchup. That was dinner, okay? That was dinner. And I remember times when I cooked, right, I bought the food that I needed, portioned it out for myself, cooked food, and then when I would cook, right, I, I would buy exactly the amount of meals I would need to get me through the, to the next grocery trip, right? right? So I was college kid, you're, you're busy. I would cook, and all of a sudden, you, the, as, as I'm finishing the food, I had two roommates. My roommates would come down, smell the food, and grab a plate. I'm like, this, <laughs> I did not cook for everybody. This is food for me for the next couple of days, all right? So, so what's my point? The things that children don't, and have, by the way, I have way more stories than just that, all right? Some, some more gross than others, some with toilet paper that I don't even want to share. Um, but what's my point? My point in saying all that is the things that you don't learn as a child will harm you as an adult, right? In college, you see kids that don't know how to do laundry. You see kids who have no clue what they're doing. In the kitchen, you'll see kids who just, you would think, who raised you, right? And a lot of times... It just wasn't instilled in them when they were a child, and it hurt them growing up, all right? And we know that has a consequence when it comes to things like that, right? Things like basic necessities of life, like cooking, laundry, right? It has a consequence, but it also has a consequence when it comes to spiritual matters. If children don't learn to obey their parents, how are they learn to, how they're going to obey God? If children don't learn the important principles of loving God, Look, you can get a lot of things wrong. You can get a lot of things wrong as a child or as a parent. But children should see the love that you have for God. Children should see the love that you have for God. To love the Lord, right? And Jesus said, to loving the Lord our God and loving our neighbor as ourselves, on this being all the law and the prophets, the entire law, 
is summarized in loving God with everything that you have and loving your neighbor as yourself. If, if, you can, if you get a lot of things wrong as a parent, they should see the love that you have for God, the willingness to sacrifice that you have for God, the willingness to help your neighbor, your Christian brethren, the, your, your enemy even. That is what they should see in you as a result of the Word of God having making a difference in your life. And so, there comes a point, there should come a point where ideally children learn why it's good to obey their parents. And for this to work, for children to learn why, why obedience, why parents' rules are good, they must, number one, see that you love them, right? It, it, is, it is, they must, number one, see that you love them and that you know and that you want and desire what's best for them. That you know that, that, that they know that you love them and that they trust you and that you know what is best for them. Here's why I say that. Here's a connection point. Is part of what helps us as Christians be obedient to God and, and do what He's called us to do and serve Him is the fact that He first loved us. Christ first loved us. And he is all loving, and he is all knowing. And after a while, you learn that, hey, God isn't trying to just keep things from my life. You learn after a while that, hey, Jesus isn't just, um, that, he, that he really just wants the best for me. And he loved me. He gave himself for me. He knows what's best for me. At some point, you just realize that, hey, just doing what God is calling me to do in my life, he's got my back. Why? Because he loved me, and he's never done me wrong. Right? Though parents mess up, children should absolutely see that you love them. Absolutely so. That should not be a question. And children should also see that you receive commandments from God and that you are obedient to the scriptures. And that as parents, you may do wrong or you may fall short and you may make mistakes. If you live life according to the scriptures, it's a good thing he doesn't make mistakes. So at least you point children to the Lord. But of course... When disobedience comes into play, you must be ready to correct and punish when needed. Look at verse number 5 of chapter 12. Again, verse 5 says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh uh, unto you as unto children, My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son, whom he receiveth. And, and so, parents, the, again, there's, there's, there's some approaches where um, parents are too hard on their kids, right? Where they show the discipline and they show the rules and they, and they uh, enforce those rules, but they don't show enough love, right? And then there's the other side where it's kind of, they, they're too lenient and then they don't hold them accountable for the, the parents' rules and, and, the, and the rules of the home. And neither are good, by the way. Neither are good. Um, there needs to be a willingness and a readiness to correct and punish your children. Not because you want to see them. Let me just back up. And the reason is is because you love them. It is hard to punish children. It is hard to give children a whooping. It is hard to correct people. It's hard to exhort our brethren, right? It, that can be hard at times. It can be challenging when we go to a brother or sister in Christ and say, Hey, brother, you're not living right. What are you doing? This doesn't honor the Lord. That can be a hard thing to do. But it's what we're commanded to do. It, it's what we're commanded to do, that we, that we live this life wanting to serve and love God and help each other and exhort one another. When it comes to children... When it comes to our brothers, the most loving thing that you can do for a brother or sister is to tell them the truth. That, hey, you're going the wrong way. The most loving thing that we can do is to say, hey, this doesn't please the Lord. And the most loving thing a parent can do for her children is to discipline them. Why? Because they need to understand that what they're doing is wrong. And they need to understand why it's important for them to do right. All right, look at verse 11 of chapter number 12. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth 
the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. The word chasten means to correct by punishment, to punish, to inflict pain, for the purpose of reclaiming an offender as to chasten a son with a rod. And so what we see here is that God chastens, God corrects, God does, it, does what it needs that is necessary to punish his children for the purpose of correcting them. And the reason he punishes us, the reason why he chastens us is because he loves us, right? It's for the purpose of correction. It's not just you're angry and you're unleashing anger. No, no, you want them to understand. Why? Because if you do not punish them, then God will chasten them. And children, and it's much better to be punished by you than to be chastened by God. And, it, and the, the, the desire is it produces a good thing. Proverbs 13, 24 says, He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. And so a, a parent who loves their child chastens their child. And, and correction is a good thing. Proverbs 29, 15 says, The rod and her poof give wisdom. But a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give the light unto thy soul. And so when it comes to raising children, chastisement, punishment, correction, you should be willing to do it when needed. Right? Maybe you're not a parent yet, right? Maybe it starts with exhorting a brother or sister in Christ. Why? Because if not, so, so again, the purpose, so the purpose of correcting a children, a child, is so they don't fall into those mistakes when they become older. The purpose of, of, um, of exhorting a brother or sister in Christ and rebuking them and, and it, it, is that they don't see the consequences of their actions. Why? Because if we don't exhort people, God will chasten them. Right, and so we are trying to save them from that. You know, it, it's like I'll give you this illustration. You know, a, a father, you know, goes out for the day, and he, and he, he let's he has two sons. Uh, father has two sons, and he goes out for the day. And before he goes out, he tells his children, "Hey, uh, older son, I want you to do this chore, and I want you to do this. And the younger son, I want you to do this. And I want all the I want these things to be done before you get home, right?" And actually what happens a lot of time is they forget and they dally off and then they see the father coming home. And then you see them doing the chores right then and there as you come home. Um, but in this example, they tell there's an older child and there's a younger child. And they're both given responsibilities to do before the parent comes back. And let's say, for example, the older child does what he's called to do. He, he, he's obedient to his father and he does what, he, what his father asks him to do. But then he sees the younger child... And he sees that the younger child does not want to obey. He sees that the younger child uh, does not want to listen and wants to do whatever he wants to do. And so in this situation, the older, the older uh, brother comes to the younger brother and he says, Hey, what are you doing? You know, dad asked you to do this. You know, you know he asked you to do this. You ought to just do it, right? And all of a sudden, a lot of times what happens is the younger child gets mad at the older child and says, Who do you think you are? I, I do what I want, right? Uh, you're not dad. You don't have any authority over me. Um, and what happens is a lot of times the younger child gets mad at the older child. Why? Because he's messing with whatever he's wanting to do. He's playing his game. He's goofing off. He's doing whatever. But the older child knows that if the younger child doesn't do anything and his father comes back, they're going to receive a severe punishment. When we exhort our brethren, when we punish, when you chase in children... You're trying to save them from the chastisement of the Lord. And a lot of times what happens when we, ex when we exhort somebody, a lot of times they get mad at us. But it's not our words. Older sons say, hey, you know dad said. He's reminding them about what his father said. His father's authority. When we exhort our brethren, when we correct our children, we're trying to save them. And just because they get mad at us, we're trying, we want them to be reconciled. We, we want them to do the right thing. We don't want them to be chastised. And so remember that. It's a, it's a great idea for 
to hold children accountable to one another. Why? Because we are also called to exhort. If we're called to exhort, that's what, that's what God calls us to do. And so, we're wrapping up here. So, parents, you're trying to teach children to live for God. You understand is that they belong to Him, right? Sometimes if you think about a child as, oh, he's my kid and I can do with him what I want. Well, that God did give him to you, all right? God give, give him or her or them to you. But God has also given commandments as to how you ought to raise children according to his word. Raise them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, right? Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So your job, parents' job, is to work themselves out of a job. All right, so when that child leaves the home, you'll be able to say with a good conscience before God, hey, I did everything that you have asked me to do. Right? Because steward, the stewardship of a child is a very serious responsibility. One that the world neglects. One, because it's been neglected so much, we see the detriment of our society as a result. So parents' job is to work themselves out of a job and to teach children and just teach them to love God, teach them what God has said, teach them the commandments of God, just, just teach them what it means to live for God. Also, when discipline is needed, don't run away from it. Don't, um, don't, uh, don't be scared of it. Why? Because discipline, when it's hard, done with a heart of love, when you want that child to be restored, and you understand that's the purpose behind it, right? it's not something that's done out of anger, it's not just, I'm the boss, do what I say. It's discipline is, is necessary because you want them to be reconciled. You want them to be, learn to be obedient to you. That they learn so that they will later learn to be obedient to God. And then um, that they just see the importance of what you said and what you've called them to do. Why? Because, again, it's all getting them ready for their walk with God. You know, if a child doesn't obey you, how will he obey his heavenly father, right? If he won't obey his physical father, his physical mother, how will they obey their heavenly father, right? And so teach your children. Discipline your children. Be patient. <laughs> Patience is necessary. Patience is required. We get that from the Lord. He is patient with us. Okay? So be of good cheer. As long as you do what God has called you to do, to the best of your ability, as he has called you to do it. Okay, he, he, he teaches children, he, he blesses them, and um, the greatest privilege that as a parent you can have is to know that your children walk with God, and that they walk with truth, and that they walk faithfully. So a lot of times it's hard, a lot of times it's not easy, right? A lot of times kids don't listen. Um... But be a good cheer, be a good faith. Sometimes we don't listen. So be patient with children. All right, let's close in prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for what you have taught us. Lord, I pray that you help us, Lord. I pray that you be with us as we continue this walk with you. Lord, any parents in the room, Lord, I, I, pr I pray that you bless their family. Lord, I pray that you help them as they raise their children, Lord, as they seek to be obedient to you. Lord, any grandparents or future grandparents, Lord, I pray that you help them too. Help them to be a blessing to their children, their children's children. Father, any future parents in this room, Lord, I, I, I pray that you help instill this um, early on, that they may know, that we may know. Father, I pray that you continue to be with us, Lord. We need your grace. We need your love. We need your mercy. God, we need you if we're going to continue to live this life for you. Father, we love you. We desire for Heritage Baptist Church to be drawn closer to you. Father, we know that family matters to the Lord. So, Father, help it to, be, uh, help it to matter to us. Father, thank you for all that you've given us. Lord, help us to be faithful with what, you have, what we have been given. Father, we love you. We thank you for all these things. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.